this video we're going to look at learning a tune called My Shining Hour. We're really going to be focused on how you learn the chord progression and learn which keys the tune visits at certain times. Improving your repertoire of jazz standards is all about realising that there are certain patterns that always crop up. By learning which keys a tune visits at certain points and what the progressions are within those visits to each key, we can put the foundations in place which will allow us to build great improvisation or perhaps do an interesting arrangement of the tune. So this video is aimed at you if you've already studied some common jazz chord progressions such as perhaps a 36251 and you've also studied some of the common kinds of jazz chords such as minor sevenths, dominant sevenths and major sevenths and where you might expect to find them in a simple chord progression. However, even if these things are a little unfamiliar, I'd encourage you to join the band and come along for the ride. So My Shining Hour is a 32 bar song in concert E flat major. Everything I refer to in the video is at concert pitch, but if you play a transposing instrument, we've also provided all the PDFs that I've written in all the common transpositions at the NYJC website. The first thing we're going to do is sing the tune together. Think of yourself as part of the band here, so cycle around the tune, rewind the video a bit if you need, until you're really comfortable singing it. So now we're going to play the tune. The melody is almost entirely diatonic within the scale of E flat major at concert pitch. So see if you can spot the one note that falls outside of this scale. Now we're going to start to learn the bass line. So My Shining Hour is a 32 bar form which you can think of as four lines of eight bars. So here's the bass line for the first eight bars starting on the tonic of concert E flat. And each bass note lasts for one bar on this line. One, two, three, four. And here's the second line of eight bars. Right. 
Now we're going to sing the first 16 bars of the bass line, putting numbers to each of the bass notes. We leave out bars 15 and 16 for now. The numbers relate to the key that we're in at that particular moment in the song. So you'll see on screen where the key changes and you can also refer to all of this on the PDF that we're linked to. So far we've had a 1-6-2-5-1-6-5 in our home key of E flat. Then the tune visits C minor or the relative minor by going 5-1-6-2-5-1 in C minor. Bars 15 and 16 feature a 2-5 in the original key with an F7 instead of an F minor 7. This forms the first half of the tune. So the third line moves through three keys quite quickly. One, two, three, four. Two. So there we had another 2-5-1 in A flat major, a 2-5 but not the one in G flat major, and then a turnaround or a 3-6-2-5 in the home key of E flat major. Here we are having a look at the last line of eight bars, which is all in the home key of E flat major. Okay, so we get one. <laughs> So that last line goes one, four, three, six, two, five, one, and one bar of one at the end as well. The purpose of learning the tune like this is so we can really get a feel for which keys the chord sequence visits. And we can also start to reduce what looks like 32 bars of chord symbols into a series of very understandable sequences, most of which are based around elements of a 3-6-2-5-1 sequence. Even though the tune is in concert E flat major overall, being able to find your way through the form is all about knowing which keys we're visiting at various points during the form. So here we are playing the whole bass line. Join in. Okay, let's sing it. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. A great way to practice knowing which key we're in at any point in the tune is to use hand symbols. So in this example, we're going to use this for when we're in our home key of E flat major. We're going to use this for when we visit C minor or the relative minor. We're going to use this 
while we're briefly in A flat major or the original chord four and we're going to use this for a very brief visit to G flat major just for two chords. Have a go along with us as we try. One, two, three, four. So here's the tune with the bass line and the melody. You might notice that we've substituted the G7 that takes us into C minor at the end of the first line for a B diminished. This is a common substitution. It has more to do with changing the bass line than really changing the sound of the chords. So pick either the bass line or the tune and join in with us. Let's just clarify those last eight bars, as the chords have some specific qualities and alterations that it's really useful to be able to pick out whether you're playing the bass or harmony instrument or improvising. Here we're going to play the arpeggio, that's the root, third, fifth, and seventh of each chord on the last line. One is major seven, four, dominant seventh, three is half diminished, six, dominant, two minor seven, five is dominant, and one is major seven again. <laughs>
Okay, so we're ready to have a play and try some improvising. You might notice that we've added a couple of harmony lines into the arrangement as well. So have a listen to how we're finding our way around the chord sequence and trying to bring some of the lovely colours from that sequence into our improvising, which is what learning a tune this way is really all about. So enjoy the performance.
I'd really encourage you to put the real book or I real book down, find a recording and have a go at learning it this way. Once you do this kind of preparation on a tune, you'll find that when you come to improvise, you might have all sorts of new ideas and new paths and routes you can take through the tune and it can really take your playing to the next level. <laughs>